Hey YouTube, I just made top 8 in a tournament with Testament and this finally qualifies me to make a Testament guide. So today we're going to be doing a full blown out guide. We're going to talk about the basics, pros and cons, talk about the combos you need. And I'm going to structure this guide a little different. I'm going to talk more about strategy because I think this character has a lot of unique interactions that I think we need to cover. So we're going to focus really heavy on the strategy. Timestamps below. Let's talk about this character. I, you know, I've been playing Testament a lot, tons of fun, but what kind of character are they? They're a little hard to describe. At first, you might think they're a zoner because, you know, they have this fireball. It's really good. It's one of the better ones in the game. And off the fireball, you know, they can do stuff like throw. They can, they can do teleport. So it's like they have zoning, but they also have some other options, right? Like teleports are naturally a very mix up heavy tool and they don't have any shortage of mix up. So I call her like a tricky zoner, tricky long range character that kind of excels at like this spacing so if you're looking for someone that's a little more technical and a little bit more of a flashy play style while still maintaining a good mid and far range presence with mix-up testament might be the character for you some of the strengths of this character she has good neutral in general against most characters so 5s really good it's probably one of the farthest reaching 5s's in the game and it comes out pretty fast this is kind of the bread and butter of the character you do 5s into something like fireball or a different special and a lot of characters have a really hard time contesting that their 6p is very very good probably one of the best 6p's in the game one of the best 5s's in the game some of the jump in normals like the js and jh are also very very good jump in normals for their class so yeah, in general, just has good neutral. The fireball is pretty good frame data, so a lot of fireballs at this range are a minus, think like Kai, but testaments are plus. Stain state is also very good, right? This puts a little purple cloud on them, and if you hit them, they pop up and you get a full combo, or if they block, you get more pressure, right? So yeah, in general, when this fairy is out, your neutral is just really good. You can teleport to it or... The, uh, the crow will go to it. It's just, it's all really strong. Sometimes getting that can be hard to come out, which is one of her cons. The other pro I would say is that I think she has good use of meter. You know, this super right here, it's very good utility. Um, one, it provides really good mix up. Two, it gives you like one of the most advantageous states after a wall break because one, they're stained and two, you get the wall break okay. Yeah, another benefit of the super is that it's really good in combos. One, it kind of locks your burst out. And two, you can literally get a wall break from almost full screen <laughs> for only 50 meter. It's it's really good. So what are some of the cons? Defense is actually pretty bad. This super, she does have a Rissa super, but it's really slow. Example is like if you throw a meaty button out like this. Yeah, you can actually block after <laughs> and so it's one of the slowest supers in the game. It makes it really easy to uh, get safe pressure on her. The other thing is she has no meterless reversal. So, you know, teleport, whatever, doesn't have invo. So you have to hold a lot of pressure in this game. She has one of the weakest wake up options in the game. Because she excels at like this range, characters that can keep her out of this range, like let's say they have full screen zoning, for example, Axel or Happy Chaos, I think Testament struggles against them a lot. If you can't get a fireball out, it takes away a lot of the potential of the character. And in general, I think her um, her reward from a lot of things are, is kind of low. For example, like even if you just get like a 2k, 2s, you go into fireball, you throw the meaty throw, you get stain state, but a lot of characters actually get like a legitimate mix up here. So you can do stuff to get a legitimate mix up here, but it sacrifices some damage and it, you are taking some risk doing that and they can poke you out of the teleport. So sometimes I think the risk reward for Testament can be a little low, but I think in future patches, they'll fix that. All right, so let's talk about normals. Again, her normals are actually pretty good. Her two P's are mash buttons. So if you're trying to mash out something, you just kind of mash two P. This links into six P. So that, you get something like this and then the fireball hits meaty and then you know, the throw hits meaty. You'll see that kind of sequence a lot. 5P, it's a situational anti-air. I honestly don't find myself using it that much unless it's like something like Milia or, you know, Kai's Fuja arc, just something you need to stick out something that a 6P won't necessarily help you with that much. But same idea also goes into uh, 6P as well. 6P, of course, god normal, very good. The other cool thing about it is that it goes on the fireball. And pretty much you just always cancel on the fireball. You know, sometimes you can cancel on the H fireball and get a sweaty combo. 
I recommend just always canceling the S Fireball. It's really easy, and then you know you can get teleport or meaty bird after. The cool thing about her 2K is that it actually low profiles some stuff. So you see how that hits, and then low profile 2K. You can actually make the uh, the jab whiff, so it can be useful in a lot of different scenarios. So play around with it. Um, it's also your low starter, so you'll be using it a lot. 5K, I tend not to use it that much, um, just because like 2K has pretty similar range, but 5K does have a little bit more range. So like if you're trying to contest this kind of space, 5K is a decent option. But the main reason you'd run up to do like a 2K, for example, is to contest like a 6P or hit them low, and uh, 5K doesn't do either of that. So you really don't tend to use it much. Either of them, they both go into 2k 2d and then fireball you'll see that sequence a lot you can also like stagger if you want to like throw them off you can do 2k into 6hs and so like if they're like delay bashing or something you'll, you'll catch them testament's s buttons are pretty standard um this is just a typical close 5s and then you can you know you go for a throw after or you frame trap with 2s 2s is your low unfortunately the range isn't the best so like I tend not to use it that much on neutral unless I'm like trying to call out a very specific move, like let's say Eno Stroke. It's really good in block swing because you can get, you know, 5s, 2s into H that combos. The other cool thing is on counter hit, let's say they're mashing because that's not a true block swing. That combos and then you can get. Oh yeah, and then far S is obviously like your your god neutral button. Use it a lot. Cancel in the fireball. Or sometimes don't cancel it to bait like a uh, retaliation. 5H, it's okay. It's pretty disjointed, so like in theory you can counter poke with it. But like it's really hard and it doesn't go as far as 5S. So I don't really use it in neutral, but there's there might be potential. Um but where I will use it is let's say you get a close like like a 5S that's this close. You can delay cancel into uh, 5H to kind of catch other options. And if you delay, you have to actually delay the 5H because if you do it immediately, it'll just true boxing. But if you delay the 5H, you'll hit them and then, you know, you can kind of condition them to sit still after you, they block a uh, 5S. Uncharged Dust will be very useful because if you get stain on them, for example. So this is what it looks like. And yeah, you can literally get a wall break from 5D Instinct State. Air normals, you know, this in theory is probably like a good air to air. I never use it like since JS has the god range, but if you need something fast, it's probably your best option. J2K, this kind of seems like, or JK, this kind of seems useless, right? <laughs> but it actually has some use. And the main time I'll see myself using it is like, cause it obviously like, it kicks behind. If you teleport, like let's say after a S um, fireball, you don't actually auto correct. So where you use this JK is like, cause you don't auto correct, you can use that to like, cover behind you. JS, right, air to air. You can do stuff like j cancel JS into JD. That's usually your air to air confirm and then get whatever. Yeah, you just get something like that, right? Yeah, you can get something like this, which is pretty good. So JS is your air to air. You can like literally just press JS, JD, and then the JS doesn't uh, contact anything. The JD won't come out. Oh yeah, JH, this is basically your go-to jump in. It has a really good hitbox, so it can actually trade with some 6Ps, especially if I like, I like the right angle. Uh, Testament 6P is really good, but you'll have to trust me on this one. And JD is kind of like, it's your double overhead. So this does hit overhead. And so you can do kind of like some cool things like this, where you get like a JS or JH and then the JD. So the cool thing about JH and the JD is that if you delay it at the right time, so like sometimes people mash grab after you're jumping and if they mash grab, then they just get counter hit and you get a combo, which is pretty nice, right? But honestly, I don't see myself using JD outside of like combos, because if you want to do like a delayed overhead, you can just do like a, a slow JH and then mix up with uh, like an empty low, like a 2k. Those hit on like pretty much the same frame and we'll show you where to do that later. But let's cover the specials. So that's kind of where Testament shines. Let's cover the worst special, this move. Um, the Barney comes out from the portal. I don't know why people are calling him Barney, but sure. One hits low, 214S, one hits high. Um, it's honestly not that good because they can like literally do anything to it. Like they can just run by and then hit you. Also, if you block it, 
you see that's a punch right so it's it's actually really unsafe i tend to use it very rarely the the one time i will use it is like like after a normal just to like kind of check them the other issue of this move is like you can block it on reaction both the low and the high hit different frames as you see, I'm reacting there. So I'm not the biggest fan of it, um, but you can like catch up on off guard, um, especially if you're like canceling from the normal like this and then uh, some people not ready for it. And also you can obviously make it safe with uh, with a rapid cancel. It's also like decent in neutral. Like sometimes I'll find a spot to use it in neutral where it's like they're jumping around and then like they land, right? And you can use this to like kind of catch their landing. All right, let's talk about the fireball. Um, H fireball is pretty much only for combos or like, you can throw out the occasional H fireball to like if someone's reacting to the fireball startup and then they might just jump into the fireball. <laughs> It's just pretty good. Basically, the one you want to get out is S Fireball, and the H Fireball is just to like punish for people for trying to jump over the S Fireball. So why do you want to get S Fireball? Well, one, it's chip damage. Two, you get that little succubus out, which the crow goes to, or you can teleport to. Um, so this is kind of where you start your game plan. The crow, of course, applies stain state. Cool thing about the crow is that if you call it like as it's coming back, it'll actually um be, be lowered to the ground and it'll hit crouchers something like this and then run up 5s and then you know get stain stay that way it's, there's some pretty cool applications that i'm still working on but yeah you can definitely take advantage of that it's also really good for like controlling the jump space as well i prefer the control of jump space with crow compared to h fireball just because one applies stain state has a little quicker recovery too but they both have their uses and they both control different spaces teleport of course um you have two versions one goes to succubus and then another, if you hold down the button, it just teleports in place. You can also do this in the air. Those are all really good strategies. So you can do something like this, and then you know, kind of like bait out the ant air. Let's go to supers. Um, invincible reversal. Slow. Be careful with it. Opponents can like easily safe jump or just hit like a meaty jab and they have to block. So you really need to pick your times. So like if you think like something like this is coming out, for example, that's a good time to uh, super because there's a big enough gap right you do need to use it sometimes i mean it's your only defensive option so make sure you use it, it does have full invisibility the other super um again can't talk about this in the intro but the third hit applies stain state basically you can get a mix up off of this you don't want to just throw it out neutral because this will happen yeah so that actually punished right so you need to be careful even if they don't get the punish they can just like up back and run away and you just kind of waste the 50 meters right but where this actually shines is you can cancel it from a normal and this makes it harder to deal with right you can't just up back after like you see how i, I air dash but i can't some pick some characters can't punish but a lot of characters can't actually punish in this scenario yeah, see, that was timed immediately. But again, it's you can kind of like run away. You can super jump and you know you kind of like it's not the best use of meter. But against some characters like Nago who can't like use their mobility very well, then you can kind of force them into a stain safe situation while being like you know relatively safe, right? But where this really shines, besides combos, is if you get them in stain state. So let's say this is a really common situation. You throw them throw a meter fireball you throw the bird on them and then you hit them and so this is actually a true block string which means you get a mix-up and you can just go empty low um another option is you can just jump and then air back dash js that hits overhead another option you have is you can just run up 2k or run up dust they're all really good options Another cool thing about this super is that after you do it and you go for your mix, let's say they block, you saw how that bird actually hit Testament there? The bird actually approaches from an angle pretty similar to like just summoning the bird. And you can get another stain state, the bird's plus on block, and you can just continue your pressure. Really cool applications, and you'll have to play with what the optimal block string is. Ideally, though, they just get hit by the mix. <laughs> but even if they block it, it's still a really good situation for you. Another key point is that if you're playing against Testament, if you wire see the first hit or the second hit, you're just gonna get smoked. <laughs> Don't do that. You can wire see the third hit, although it is a little tricky. 
and there you can like kind of reduce the mix up so that's pretty good but obviously they can bait the yrc so sometimes you'll have to bait sometimes they'll burst on block and you can bait that as well let's cover combos and knockdown situations next i think your most common knockdown will be something like 2k 2d in the fire and there's a couple things you can do um what my preferred is to just go into the bird here now they can backdash right but you can also like slightly delay your bird Yeah, so if you're close to the corner, you know, you can catch them with a uh, delayed bird or something. Let's say they try jumping, right? This will catch. I actually recommend um, if you're close, just doing a full charge fireball. The fireball hits meaty and then you get the crow. There's not too much benefit fully charging the fireball like up close. So 2k DD, if you can hit confirm it, do the fully charged fireball and then go in the bird like that. If you're really far, you don't actually get a meaty, so this isn't like the best situation. So if you're like pretty far, I tend to just go for this. But again, that bird's not meaty, so it's not the best. You can also just go into to the charge and then like do something cool like this. There's like some really cool things you can do like... And then you can get a combo off of it. Um, I find that a little inconsistent because it doesn't hit truly meaty. But basically, if you hit confirm it on block, generally do the uncharged fireball. You can also do 2k 2d. You, know, you get something like that in the corner. Um, you just go into h fireball uncharged into micro dash 5k. Again, when you do your micro dashes, I recommend always just doing the dash macro makes it way more consistent. You just kind of like tap the two buttons right after another. Let's say you land a jump in. This is pretty common. I generally just do this. Just go in a sweep. And, but you can also do the same thing where you like do a partial charge. But I recommend just taking the damage and pushing them out to full screen. But generally that's the only time you're comboing the sweep. There's a couple counter hit combos you should know. Your general DP punish, what I like to do is 5S. That hits counter hit. Then you go into 2H. And you press that immediately. And what you do is you do core circle forward heavy but you actually what you do is you do a partial charge so you just hold it for a little bit and you kind of have to get the hang of it i time it like right before the character that i'm fighting against hits the ground and you see how they pop up really high compared to just this doing it just immediately can be pretty tricky and then you can kind of end in whatever you want, right? So a common ender is you do like dash 5k and the 6hs, depending on the, the weight of the character. Your ideal combo looks something like this. And then you can get that. Or if you like time it right. Right, you can get the bird. And you actually generally want to end in bird to wall break because you get the stain state. The stain state carries over after the wall break, which means you can run up and then get pressure or your, your round start 5S has, it's a lot scarier, right? Because you get a lot of damage after. If you want to spend 50 meter, always just go in the super. Um, generally, I don't find myself using RC for combos that much. And then, you know, something like that will work pretty well and you get stain state you take them to corner you get positive bonus all very good and your wall break combos are very similar um one thing i do want to cover is there's certain situations where like you'll get stain state right and like you get something like this that's my recommendation like just run up and 2s 2h sometimes you'll be in a situation like here where like you're not close enough to get or you like mistime it and you don't get the uh a close enough 2s you can just do 2s in the fireball but yeah my, what i found the most consistent is just one up 2s and it looks like you have to delay it but you actually just press it immediately you literally just press 2s 2h right after another okay so let's say you get same state you get a fireball you can actually far button teleport into uh a full combo right so that's the ideal is you get the fi the close 5s into 2h but uh 2s works in further distances i think i think i'd be remiss to like forget about something like this so let's say you have an rc here generally like you can end any combo and like this the 5k and the 6hs into the overhead barney 
I don't tend to use it too much because I think those are like less optimal. But sometimes like you are far enough that you can't get like a 2H that you just you absolutely need to do the 5K and the 6HS. Another pretty cool combo is like you can do if you want a baby combo to do like a baby DP punish that that works there. 5H counter hit. Oh yeah, counter hit 5H you get this. I think it's the same thing counter at 6H. What do you get after counter at 6H? I think counter at 6H is just crow, yeah. I don't like doing 6H too much, like in neutral, because it just has so much with recovery. But yeah, if this if that happens, then you can just pick a permanent super in theory. I think that's it for combos. Alright, so let's talk about strategy. Most important thing, any character, round start. What are your round start options? Well, 5S can be decent. Um, but it's a little slow compared to other characters 5s's so generally i don't like to do it but what i do like to do is a slight walk back 5s i think this is like my go-to round start because most characters don't have the range to do walk back 5s and so let's say they're like mashing 6p or they're doing their own button you'll actually just counter hit them and then you get something like a fireball 6p is obviously a good round start i usually just buffer that into the fireball as well 2s can be decent it is like a counter poke, but again, it doesn't reach round start, so be a little careful about it. But if you're like trying to call it something very specific, it can be an okay option. Another round start, if you want to be on the safer side, is just air dash back air fireball. I think air fireball in general is just really good. It's a really safe option. And you get the succubus out, and then you know you can start your game from there. So yeah, I'd mix between those four. Um, backdash and block are never bad, bad options either. But generally with Testament, your round starts aren't the best compared to some characters, so you don't want to take too many risks. If you can make space from round start, you should be pretty happy as a testament player, I think. Unless you're playing like, you know, like Happy Chaos or uh, Axel. You get to this space, what do you do, right? So you always want to look for 5S in the fireball. But you have to understand that this 5S in the fireball has a gap, right? So some characters can actually literally just mash right after, depending on the space, and hit you. Some characters can also... Right, so they can they can ID in time so that they counter hit your 6P. But of course you have options against this, right? So you want to condition them to stand still after the 5S. So you can do that by doing like 5S, 5H if you're close enough. Also 5S into nothing and then wait into 6P. So it looks something like this and then right counter hit their approach coming in. So you have, you have some really good options there. So let's say you finally condition them to stand still after 5s now you have a succubus on them your strongest option is to go straight into the bird because it gives you stain state and it beats out a lot of like common things that people want to do right let's look at what this beats so if i'm just running forward a lot of characters will hit their run forward let's say i try to air dash in it will hit that it beats a lot and you get stain state which is really good you know a lot of people will play scared or you know some people actually just try to go in you kind of have to as a testament player when you see what they're doing when they're staying state you have to make that adaptation right there's some ways to beat the crow a common option is they'll just jump after right another really common option is actually some characters can just run forward and hit a bump uh, and then some other characters like Eno or Kai, they can just stun dipper or stroke under and just completely destroy it. So you kind of have to play each of these depending on what option you think they're going to do. Because you can't cover every single option they can do, right? So if you think they're going to do a button, like you can literally just contest the space here. So if I do, you know, run forward button, that will work. Or if I'm just like running forward, that will catch it. Let's say they're neutral jumping. Like you can't really punish them for neutral jumping, but you can always punish their landing. And it's very important to understand. So say so neutral jump and then they come at you, right? You can anti -air that, right? Or they neutral jump and now, now, okay, they gave up space, right? Which means if they're back at this distance, you just throw in their fireball. You're perfectly okay with them jumping out because that means that you can just keep continuing your zoning game. And then of course, if they're doing like stun dipper, you can just block. If they're doing stroke, you can you know throw it or you can try check it off like a 2K or something. Different characters have different options. Some like Nago, he could just clone after. Clone's really hard to deal with. So you can like kind of predict it with like a jump back or something like that. So, okay, you finally convince them to sit still after the crow. They have stain state. What do you do? Well, if they're just gonna play passive, you know, you can throw in their fireball. 
you want to be in this situation where they're stained and you have a succubus out. So, you know, some people will try to prevent that. And then obviously that's when you can 6P, you know, or prevent their approach. But once they get all of this, you have a few different options, right? You know, you can do 5S, run a 5S into a combo. And then, right, you get something really tricky like that into a full combo. Think of it this way. Your goal is to get the fireball out first, then the crow, and then their fireball. If you can get all that out, you can set up some like really dirty stuff. And people will try to prevent you from getting all that out. And it's your goal as a testament player to stop those approaches or stop the ways of preventing them from getting what you want out. Right. I want to talk a little bit about charge fireball, right? When do you use a charge fireball? Basically, whenever you think you have the space, right? The cool thing about charge fireball is that it has a hitbox that's very, very long and it hits like full screen. So if you can get it out, go and get it out. But again, it makes the opponent's job a lot easier just to IED over it. And of course, like you don't want to just stick to that game plan. If you have a very linear game plan of just 5S and the fireball and the crow, it's going to be very linear. It's going to be very easy to predict, right? So you want to mix in other options into your neutral, right? This is a very good option. Just like randomly throw it in. Same thing with like air backdash into the other fireball. In general, like when you have a succubus out, it's actually okay to like go on the offensive because I think this is really strong where you like super jump and then you go back in with the teleport because they can't like see where the teleport is and you can also like fake teleport and then like if they're using six p's it'll be kind of tricky to anti or that so it can be very ambiguous is it worth doing charge over just spamming different directions yeah you want to be um very unpredictable right just in any fighting game the more unpredictable you are the harder it's going to be to uh to get a read on you for defense, there's not too much, right? You have YRC, Backdash is obviously strong, Gold Burst is obviously strong. You have to use the system mechanics, right? There's nothing too crazy with Testament, but make sure you're using everything, right? Make sure you're rotating your options. Gold Burst, YRC, Super, Backdash, fuzzy options when you get a little more advanced. But yeah, honestly, not too much to cover on defense. So let's cover our offense, right? So most of the knockdowns, of course, and then something like this, and you get the bird and then, you know, you go back into their stain, right? So it's either run up through a button or throw a fireball or try anti them with 6P and then get pressure based off that. I think it's a decent check after crow. Like doing something like this is decent, but they can just jump, right? So or they can run forward. I really don't like Arbor Sign. I think it's pretty weak. A place I would potentially use it is like in a block string or like let's say they're neutral jumping here and then you can check their landing with Barney. So let's just say you get them the block. You're up You're up in their face. What do you do? Um, you can just do like 5S and the throw or 5S and the 2S, just your typical stagger pressure. Same thing 2K into the throw or 2K, 2D. A couple other cool things you could do is you can do like... 5s and the 2h as more of a gap but this 2h is like not very minus so you can like reset pressure you can know you can do a 5s after so you can get some pretty cool block strings like this that are pretty hard to contest but yeah in general you're just trying to play strike though right Yeah, but there's a lot of cool things you can you know play with generally you're just gonna end up like let's say you think they're con contest after 2H, you just do a delay fireball, and then you're back to this mind game of are they are you gonna throw a crow or or not? Yeah, you can jump, but like no one really jumps after 5S, right? Like no one's really holding up there because the default option is 5S 2S, right? So it's like once you have them conditioned to respect the 5S 2S, then you can start going for 5S 2H. So let's say you either push them to full screen with the fireball or you get a throw, right? You have two different options after throw I like. One is if you do a delayed jump H, it actually safe jumps and it hits high. And you can mix this up with whiffing a jump H or whiffing a FD or whatever into low. These hit on exactly the same frame. You can't react. Use this. It's really strong. For some reason, everyone blocks this overhead. No one blocks this low. <laughs> Make sure you mix up both the options. I think this is your best option mid screen after a throw. The cool thing about this is like if they're even if they're mashing like grab, both options will beat wake up grab. Hey, yeah, you can um Yeah, see I was mashing grab there. So that's really good. Alright, so you're in the corner. This is where the real fun begins with Testament. You can do a meaty fireball. You have a couple different ways of doing this. Against DP characters, um, I like just doing fireball right away. 
and that hits me. You saw immediately that fireball hit, and then you can get basically a guaranteed crow, and then you know you can do crow pressure, right? So it looks something like that. Against non-DP characters, you know, like against someone like Testament, you can just do dash forward, fireball, and then you're like literally up in their face. And then you can do cool stuff like this. And it's a little harder to block that. Yeah, see, it doesn't beat DP, right? But this does beat DP. So that's why I make that distinction. Ideally, you want the dash fireball against people that can't DP, though. And then, yeah, ideally, let's say they block everything, right? Because that's the most common thing is like Testament doesn't really have that great of mix. So you're just going to block against her. Let's pretend Soul's, let's pretend Soul's not going to DP. And then you can go into super. And then again, your options after super. You know, you go 2K or Air Bash Act, Jump S. You have tons of different mix up options, right? But the goal is to get them to block that super and then do some pretty gross mix, right? So yeah, I think we covered everything. I kind of covered strategy a little more in this guide. So let me know if this is something that you guys thought was useful. And let me know in comments any additional testament tips or additional testament questions you have. I think this character is super fun. I'm probably still going to be playing them on the side. So consider checking me out, twitch.tv slash diaphone, if you're interested in, you know, asking some questions about the character or want to see some uh, additional gameplay. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more like this, consider like, sharing, and subscribing to the video. I'll see you next time and have a great one.